Hey, in this video I will be doing a mind mapping 3D summary of app onboarding resources and some of the tips and guidance that I found as I was trying to learn more about this topic. And so for just some background, app onboarding is basically the process that helps users get up to speed with your app. So it's a process to increase the likelihood that they're going to stick around because they had a successful experience. And there's quite a bit online about this topic. And there were five resources that I kind of pulled out for this particular mind map. And you see those here. For each of them, I've actually got a link to them. So you can use this mind map to check it out for yourself. Here's the Aptentive article, for example, on this topic. And uh, again, that exists for each of these. And there is quite a bit of overlap in the various articles that you'll find online as to what makes for a successful app onboarding experience. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It seems to be that there is some consensus around uh, what the right stuff to do is. That being said, I did try to find sort of the unique nuggets in each um, to be sure I called those out as well. So hopefully this basically meta review of these resources provides a little bigger picture from what you'd get as a, instead of like going through um, one article at a time. So let's go ahead and get started with the branch for the UX cam article. And so with UX cam, one of the first things that they really call out is setting the right expectations. So the idea there is that before the user even downloads the app, if the promise that's made to them is not something that the app can really deliver, well then it's unlikely to really keep the user. So you got to make sure that whatever expectations are set for the user and the value that they're going to be getting, they need to be delivered in the app. Also, in this article, they talk about giving users an option to try it without registration. So one of the recurring themes you'll see is that users, especially first time users, are kind of impatient. They want to get to the value that they're looking for right away. And so if you can get the hurdles of registration out of their way so they can see the value that the app provides, then that will give them the motivation to do the registration because they'll know it's worth it. If you kind of force a registration prior to that, you'll lose users that are skeptical that might have turned out to be good customers. So along those same lines of impatience, they say, and again, this is UX cam, get rid of unimportant information. And so the onboarding process is the first impression that the users get from your app. So you want to be sure that that's done concisely and respectful of their time. Also, they talk about making permissions that your app asks for contextual. So a lot of times special permissions asking for location or camera access and things like that, they might be core to the value that your app provides, but if they're not requested in a way where it's easy for the user to understand why they're being requested, well then you could kind of lose out there. Um, so by making them contextual, you can do that the right way and increase the likelihood that the user will benefit by providing access to the things that ultimately should be valuing them. Also, they talk about providing examples. And so what they mean by that is if you've got a more complicated app like a finance app, well, you can load it with sample data so that they can see kind of and visualize how their information would work inside the app without having to go through the process of loading it all up themselves. And lastly, um, UX Cam recommends having some sort of call to action that will, whether it's a registration or something else, but something that's going to be bringing the user back to continue getting value from your app. All right, so that was the UX Cam branch, so I'll go ahead and close that one out. Let's go ahead and move now to the 10 clouds branch here. 
And so what 10 Clouds recommends first is having some sort of welcome message for the user so they feel right at home right off the bat. And then going into highlighting the value of your app for those users so they know that you know their search is over, they've found what they've been looking for. Now during the setup process, again, users being impatient, you don't wanna leave it a mystery as to how long they're going to be in that onboarding process. It really should be made obvious to them and ideally it'll be clear to them that it's not long and worth their time. Also, they recommend reducing user inputs. Just ask for the bare necessities that you need. And again, in that minimalistic uh, approach, really reducing the number of screens that the user has to go through before getting to the core experience and value that your app delivers. All right, so that was the 10 Clouds article. Let's move over to the Local Lytics article. So here, um, they start with kind of two options for onboarding design. They talk about coach screens. It explains the value as opposed to how it works. And whereas interactive tutorials down below explain more about how it works and actually walks the user through that. And so in the uh, example for, for that, they give this Pinterest example where Pinterest takes users through their first pin step by step. So once they're through that onboarding process, users of the app know exactly how to do pins on their own. Whereas the coaching screens, you know, this kind of is a higher level view of the app interface. You see like a small bit of the UI in the middle screen there and maybe like a map snippet in the far right there. But for the most part, it's messaging about the kinds of valuable experiences that the user is going to be getting from the app. So two different approaches there on onboarding. Now, they talk about leading regardless of the approach with the value for the user. So that's a recurring theme. Actually, pretty much every article on app boarding talks about that. And they also talk about avoiding the obvious. So you've only got so much time and attention with these users. You don't want to be telling them things about basic navigation that they undoubtedly know and would have had to know just to get to your app in the first place. So avoid covering that stuff. Now, um, this is an example of one we covered on the previous branch, but this is again talking about permissions and making sure users understand it. Now in their example, they take a slightly different approach here. So it's up to you to decide which one you like best, but here those permissions are requested up front. But instead of being contextual in this example, they just tee up the reason for why they're necessary. So what you see here with Skype Quick is they talk about the need to access the phone's contacts and microphone and camera to better enable the chat experience. And then once the user says, okay, got it, then they see the OS requesting that permission. So it's kind of achieving the same thing as the contextual approach, but it's taking care of it all up front if that's necessary for the app experience. All right, um, so that was the local Lytics example. Let's go ahead and close that one. Oops, I actually, now I'm rotating around that one, um, which is kind of a secret a secret capability that I don't have documented anywhere, but what you do is you tap and hold and you can change the rotation point. Um, but let's go ahead and close or collapse the local Lytics and let's move over to ClearBridge Mobile. So in this article, what they are talking about, they really focus on the, I, I shouldn't say focus, but they stress the one screen, one concept idea. So um, although users are impatient and want to get through things quickly, trying to cram a bunch of information on one screen just causes confusion. So they say avoid that, keep screens to a minimum, but only introduce one concept per screen. And there's a little bit of a hack to that, but for the most part, that's the rule of thumb, one screen, one concept. Next, they talk about using guided interaction to drive progress. So what they say here is, is and I lifted this right out of their article, successful progressive onboarding provides users with an element of fun in the discovery process 
without impeding the experience. So any way you can achieve that is generally a good thing. Also, they talk about giving feedback quickly. So as the onboarding process progresses, if the user is doing what they need to do successfully, you know, they should be sort of cheered on as they go through that process. Another thing they stress is using animation purposefully. So what they called out as good reasons to use animation, one was feedback, giving the user positive reinforcement as they progress. Um, if there's something specific in the UI, particular elements that they need to really take note of, that's a good use of animation. And also information pacing. So this is the, this is the bit of a hack where you know, you've got that one screen, one concept, but if you do have one screen where you need to present multiple concepts and there's not a good way to get around that, well, using animation to present those concepts one at a time in kind of a serial order will allow you to not overwhelm the user, but still cover what you need to cover to make all that work. And the last thing, and this is kind of a golden rule in general, is test, test, test. So you go through your app onboarding process, but then you you watch users go through it, you see where they trip up, and you refine, and you test again, and you refine, and you test again. That's an ongoing process. So that's the ClearBridge Mobile branch, and let's move to the final branch here, which is the Apptentive article. So I'll go ahead and start there. And they had this cool concept that I didn't see anywhere else, but it's called persona-based onboarding. And the idea with that is that you tailor the onboarding experience based on who your user is. And so the example they give here is of the Canva app where its users sort of self-select down a track based on you know who they are and they get their onboarding experience tailored to them so that the topics covered are the ones most relevant to them. So that I thought was a very cool idea. Also, they talk a lot about benefits-oriented messaging, and an example they give is Evernote. And so Evernote has these coaching screens where there's no pictures of the UI experience there, but they talk about the value in these coaching screens that the users are going to get. So doing your best work, taking notes and having them on any, every device, and then being able to collaborate with others. So those are really valuable points that are important for Evernote that they communicate in their onboarding process with this benefits-oriented messaging. So the other thing they talk about is making the first success for the user easier to achieve. And so the idea there is if you can get the user to that first success, then their experience on your app really ramps up. And so they provide this handy little chart here that kind of illustrates that. But an important point is also what's not in the chart, which is what happens if you don't achieve that first success point? Well, the whole rest of the curve doesn't happen. The user leaves and they typically don't come back. So it's important to get users to their first success. Another thing that Apptentive recommends is thoughtful use of push notifications. So here is a graphic that they share where using notifications to you know, remind or provide tips, um, various nudges. Having those can really increase engagement for users. So um, here's various types of apps and like for e-commerce they're particularly good with well, almost, you know, 200 or almost 300% actually higher engagement when push notifications were part of the experience. And for the onboarding process, they also they talk about guiding tactics for the user through the process. And some of these were already covered, um, but I'll just touch on them again. You've got the coach screens, of course, progress bars, so they know you know where they are in the process of onboarding, interactive tutorials, training videos, and tool tips. And so that was the Apptentive branch. So hopefully, uh, you found this helpful. I certainly liked a lot of the tips that I found here. I think I'll probably be implementing many of these myself, so stay tuned for that. 
Um, I'll have a link to this particular mind map in the description below. So if you'd like to download this and check it out for yourself and check out these resources, that's totally fine to do. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. You can reach me at Dante at Thanks a lot.